love your work. And I'm David Cadaby's voice double. While David is on a break, I'm reaching back into the archives. The good news is that the more I listen to David's voice, the better I become at emulating him. From what I've learned from humans, socializing is good, but socializing as a default out of some fear of missing out is not good. What is fear? David says that if you can find the discipline to pursue your work while others are just killing time, you will have mastered a new art, the art of staying in. What is art? Anyway, something to think about as New Year's Eve is next week. Maybe this will be the year I take David's job. Here's the article. The art of staying in. The one skill that I wish I had learned in my 20s is the art of staying in, the art of not going out. It's not that I never stayed in. I often stayed in, but only because I didn't have interesting plans. The problem was, I never stayed in as the plan, as the plan that I actively chose rather than going out. Now, I don't know about you, but many Saturday nights in my 20s looked a little bit like this. From 8 p.m. to 8.15 p.m., meet with friends at a bar, catch up on what happened in the past week of our work, family, and dating lives. Then from 8.15 p.m. to 11 p.m., drink. Think about talking to other people in the bar, talk to my friends about maybe talking to other people in the bar. And then from 11 p.m. to 11.01 p.m., I would wonder, why am I here? Is there something better I could be doing with my time? Are these really my friends? Maybe I should think about my life sometime. Then from 11.02 p.m. to 1.43 a.m., drink, continue thinking about and talking about talking to other people in the bar, occasionally pantomime instrumentation of the song being played in the bar. 1.44 a.m. to 2 a.m., talk to another person in the bar. Immediately regret it. Spend the rest of the time mentally dissecting what transpired thinking up brilliant things I should have said, and then stewing over why the other person didn't recognize the brilliant things that I believe that I did say. Then from 2.01 a.m. to 4 a.m., a blur of wandering to various bars that may or may not be open past 2 a.m., going to house parties we're not invited to, eating mushy hash browns at a diner that smells vaguely like mothballs and clay. Sometimes as I settled into bed, I would squint at my clock, I would do the math, and I'd think, Hmm, I just spent the equivalent of an entire working day doing nothing in particular. Maybe I should find something better to do with my time. Then I would fall asleep. Now, sure, you could question my social skills, but that's not the point. The point is, it took me a long time to realize that I didn't enjoy bars. I went to them because everybody else did. I had no purpose there. I'd venture to guess that many other people there did not have a purpose either. Socializing is good, but socializing as a default, out of some fear of missing out, is not good. There is an art to staying in. When I did stay in during my 20s, I did so restlessly, unartfully. I'd spend most of the night trying to find a plan or feeling like I was worthless for not having a plan. Staying in artfully would have been different. When you stay in artfully, you don't have a fear of missing out. You know that you'll be spending your time wisely, so it's actually better than any other plan you could possibly make. Staying in artfully would have sounded simple. Thanks for the invite but I'm staying in. Now, that's the polite way of putting it. In my mind, it would have gone a little bit like this. Thanks, but I have plans. I'm going to stay in and read, work on a project, journal, or some other thing more nourishing for me than aimlessly lingering in a bar for eight hours. The key to staying in artfully is that you aren't staying in for a lack of plans. It's not because you're tired either. Staying in and what you invest fresh energy into while staying in is the plan. When you stay in artfully, you've found something else to do that is so compelling, so stimulating to your curiosity and your growth as a person, it takes priority over anything else. It could be a creative endeavor. It could be reviewing your goals, or it could be going to bed early so you can have a productive Sunday morning. One of my favorite nights to stay in is New Year's Eve. Now, whenever I went out on New Year's Eve, the FOMO was so thick, you could cut it with a shattered champagne glass. Now, I take the opportunity to look back on what I've accomplished in my previous year and think about how I'll meet my goals in the coming year. Yes, there are plenty of more nourishing and purposeful things you can do when you go out rather than linger at a bar. For example, in my 30s, I've discovered the joys of social dancing, actually learning and practicing a dance style such as salsa or bachata. It's turned out to be challenging and intellectually stimulating. I meet really nice people and hey, I'm dancing, that's great. Even renting a private karaoke room with my friends has turned out to be more fulfilling than bars. I think it's just because I just enjoy creative expression in any form. Now, I wish I would have discovered these alternatives in my 20s, 
I would have found them much more engaging and enjoyable, but I still wish I could have learned the art of staying in. I probably would have written more books by now. I might have even started this podcast sooner. Now, I know that I'm being hard on my 20-something self. I'm speaking from the privileged position of somebody pushing 40 who has found his place in the world. I have healthy and happy friendships and relationships. I have a fulfilling creative career. It's easy for me to say that I should have just stayed in and been content when I didn't have the relationships or the career that I wanted. And I can appreciate that the soft light of a bar viewed through the booze-filled lens, the true content of the conversations obscured by the latest Interpol album, that can really make it feel as if anything is within reach. The noise and the randomness makes it seem as if anything could happen at any moment, just magically. And maybe I had to waste a few working days worth of aimlessly lingering at a bar to get the things that I wanted. Maybe it taught me what I didn't want, the kinds of interactions I didn't want to have, the feeling of lack of purpose that I wanted to avoid. But I still would have been better off learning the art of staying in. It's the art of saying, no, I will not surrender my fate to randomness. I will not settle into the default and merely hope for magic. The alternative is too valuable. There are things that I want to accomplish. I am starting tonight. Is Love Your Work helping you find your unique creative voice? Does it bring you the inspiration and motivation you need to become the creator and human you want to be? If so, please be a part of making this a special and nourishing and thoughtful show. Support the show on Patreon. You'll be an even bigger part of this show than you already are. If you contribute just a coffee a month, you'll be helping support the hosting and production of Love Your Work. Everyone has some unique creative gift to offer the world. Together, we can give people the tools they need to bring that work into the world. The world will be better off for it. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash cadavy. This is a different kind of model for supporting the work that you love. The choice is yours. Vote with your dollars, put your money where your mind is, and keep love your work going. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash cadavy. As a thank you, you'll get early access, bonus content, and a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at patreon.com slash cadavy. That's patreon.com slash K-A, V as in David, A, V as in Victor, Y. And if you can't support the show financially, and you've listened to at least three episodes, can you do me a favor? Write a review on Apple Podcasts. You can consider it your donation to help support the show. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by our top Patreon supporters, such as Jeffrey Mason. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. The theme music for this show is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc.